In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Rushmere St. Andrew Online, from wherever you are joining us. It's good to have you here for this Holy Eucharist. Although the government has given permission to open churches for private prayer, we will keep it under review, but St. Andrew's will remain closed for the time being. Do get in touch if you want to discuss this with me. Picking up on verse 4 of the psalm, Gladden the soul of your servant, for you, O Lord, lift up my soul. I ask for images of things that gladden your soul, and you have not disappointed me. You never do. The hymns and prayers will be accompanied with some glorious images, and perhaps the odd embarrassing one too. At the end of the service, we will again be blessed with the Ipswich blessing. Mindful of our current situation, would you join me in prayer? Dear Lord, through this time, help us to draw together in spirit, even whilst we are apart. Help us to seek out the lost and lonely, and to know that in all circumstances, however dark things may seem, we are loved and we are eternally safe. Your love has always been like this. Help us to know it. We make our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I caught up with Robin as we learned the technicalities of the new sound system. It is all in now and waiting for us to be back together again when we will all be heard. Oh, what a day that will be. What joy will fill my heart. Thank you, Joan, for this hymn choice.
Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We take a moment to gather our thoughts, remembering all that Jesus has done for us, as we call to mind those times we have failed him. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firm and resolved to keep God's commandments. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have some of the most wonderful collect prayers, and to my mind, the collect for the second Sunday of Trinity is one of the most powerful. We keep a moment of silence as we gather together our thoughts, prayers, and those we bring with us in our hearts. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your own Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Hello Robin, how are you doing? Well, uh, apart from the ca cabin fever, we've been keeping sort of very healthy, um, very healthy um, long walks with the dog and on, on the beautiful prom at Felixstowe. Absolutely great. <laughs> so what are you missing? Um, I'm missing obviously everything to do, you know, with sound, with serving, with, with uh, well, everything to do, do, do with the church in general. Very much so. But it's really lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. God bless. Diane will read the Old Testament reading from her flower bed. The child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid. For God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got him a wife in the, from the land of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall be forever. 
Amen. Amen. The New Testament lesson is read to us by Ruth. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised unto Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mary requested, we sing cornerstone which seems to speak right into the heart of our situation just now. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace.
in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instructions. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they rely on those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground, unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Some words from St. Teresa. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing make you afraid. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is lacking to the one who has God. God alone is enough. What an interesting and diverse set of readings we have had this morning. Our Gospel takes us to the pep talk Jesus gave to his disciples before sending them out to minister on his behalf. The Old Testament reading comes to us through the mists of time from Abraham's household and the inevitable and very modern tensions that are set up when the gift of new birth of a child late, late in life upset the relationship between the adopted child and mother. And in between we heard verses from Psalm 86 the opening words of which might in fact have been spoken by Hagar as she sat under the tree in the desert 
Incline your ear to me, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. That's what we call arrow prayer. And God hears her prayer and provides refreshment for Ishmael, and his life is spared. And both Islamic and Jewish tradition believe that Ishmael became the patriarch of the Arabian nations. Jesus is at pains, in the strangest of all pet talks, to warn his disciples what they will face when they go out in his name, and to warn us too, that when we really get serious about taking the good news out, we may find opposition from the unlikeliest and closest quarters. But there, in the heart of this list of likely opposition, is a very important piece of reassurance. For he assures his disciples that his Father holds all things, even to sparrows, in his gaze. He is saying, you are loved, you are protected, you are valued. We seem to be entering a very turbulent time when voices are clamouring to be heard, a time when many are seeking justice and a time where for many of us long-held convictions and our understanding of history are being undermined. I, like you, was brought up in the days when much of the world in my school atlas was pink, which meant it was part of the old British Empire. And only now, hundreds of years later, are we beginning to understand the effect of the deep-rooted historical abuse of freedom and justice that is now running up today, and which must not be ignored. The first Christians lived in a world where slavery was a fact of life. Many of them were fact slaves. And they came to be Christians because those Christian communities, in those communities, they found that they were treated as equals. They were free, they were valued. And the new Christian communities grew very swiftly because the gospel was, in practical terms, good news for so many. They found inclusion. And through Jesus, they found God the Father, a patient, loving Father and Creator, who loved them and valued them, who longed for them to come to Him in prayer. And perhaps our current trials and tribulations fade into insignificance when compared against the life-threatening persecutions those early Christians faced. Nevertheless, these past few months have seen us face up to separation from families and the threat of an illness that cannot be contained. And how often have we turned to God in times of trouble, using the sort of words that we found in our other reading, Psalm 86. As it happens, this week in our prayer course, we have reached a session on petitionary prayer. And this psalm is in many ways all about our prayer life. The past few weeks have given us ample opportunity to spend time in prayer and so much to pray for, whether it be for our own protection or for the protection of others. We might have used Psalm 86 in our prayer times. It's just full of petitions. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Preserve my soul, for I am faithful. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Gladden the heart of your servant. Give ear to my prayer, O Lord. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Teach me your way, O Lord. And it's a psalm written by David 
himself in a time of persecution. And I have no doubt that psalm would have been taken up and read by early Christians as they too came under persecution. But remember, David was to dance for joy. So when we settle down into our prayer times to pray about the issues that we see in which affect us, do we feel insignificant that our small prayers will not alter anything? Do we reach a point where we fail to be persistent because we lose heart, when we lose that sense of God's overall protection of us? We forget that we are valuable to Him. Now I find that reading to my grandchildren is a joy. As some of you will love Julia Donaldson's story of the Gruffalo and the mouse who invents him. And I thought of that mouse as I read this little story. It was deep winter and the snow was falling on the hillside. A small mouse crept out of its burrow, looked at the snow and was about to go back. When a small voice said, Hello, Mouse, can't you sleep? The mouse looked around, and on a bare branch nearby perched a tiny wren. Hello, said the mouse, I just came up for some air. And the mouse and the wren sat together beneath a pine tree, watching the snow fall. How much? Do you think a snowflake might weigh? The mouse asked the wren suddenly. Oh, almost nothing, said the wren. It's so insignificant that it carries no weight. How could you possibly weigh it? Oh, but I disagree, said the mouse. In fact, I can tell you that last winter around this time, I woke up and I came out for a breath of air. And because I had no one to talk to, I started to count the snowflakes on its branches. And I got to over 2,092,359. And when the next snowflake fell, the branch dropped to the ground and most of the snow fell off. The wren thought for a moment. And being so small, had thought that she would have no influence on the world. Yes, she thought, it is really true that just one little voice can make a difference. Well, we too can make a difference to one of our current insoluble problems by joining the Diocesan Prayer Initiative tackling racism through prayer on the 25th and 26th of June, booking a slot during 24 hours of prayer. And we pray to a Father in Jesus' name as one who values us and longs for us to speak to him. Who knows the difficulties we face? When we face seemingly insoluble problems as we have, we do wonder whether our prayers can alter things. But, as a footballer showed us this week, one person's action, one person's prayer, like a single snowflake, can cause real movement. How much more so when we come together in prayer and be praying persistently. When the disciples came back from their mission, they were literally buzzing. They were full of joy and they were glad. As we continue in prayer, let us pray that when we return here, we too may be glad. And we can sing this song with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanksgiving in my heart I will enter
enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer at a time of great anxiety and uncertainty for our world, our nation, our communities, and our families, friends, and neighbours. We pray for your church as it faces the challenges of ministering to your people in different ways, yet at a time when the need is greater than it has ever been. Bless and guide our bishops, clergy, lay ministers, and all your people of faith as they bring your message of assurance, comfort, and hope to those who are struggling that you have not forgotten them, or any of us, and that out of this adversity may come new opportunities as yet to be discovered. May new seeds of faith take root and grow stronger in the time ahead. To the glory of your name, Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our okay. prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world as each nation seeks to deal with the effects of this pandemic upon the lives of all people. For our own government, seeking to rebuild the economy of our country from the damage of the lockdown and its devastating effects on jobs and family life. We give thanks for the courage skill and devotion of all those in our NHS and residential care homes in caring for the sick and seriously ill. And we pray for those engaged in medical research that they will find new and effective ways of treating and preventing this disease in the future. Lord, protect them and guide them in all they are doing for all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Recent events have shown us both the best and the worst in our humanity. The love and compassion shown towards the weak and vulnerable in our society, but also the deep-seated suspicions and hatred towards those from different cultures and backgrounds. We pray for all those organizations which are still working 
to promote greater racial harmony and understanding. We pray for our Queen, not just as head of our church and nation, but also of the Commonwealth of Nations, an ideal she holds dear and is determined will continue. For our royal family, especially Prince Philip, now turned 99, giving thanks for his long life and unfailing support for our Queen in a long and eventful reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our okay. prayer. At this difficult time for us all, let us give thanks for our families, friends and neighbours in supporting one another in many different ways. For old friendships strengthened and new friendships formed. For all the groups and organisations which are part of our community here at St Andrews though temporarily suspended, will come back to life when the time is right, with a new appreciation of their importance from what we have all missed. We pray for our families, especially where kept apart by the current restrictions. And as today is Father's Day, let us give thanks for our fathers, both living and no longer with us, for all they do and have done in caring and providing for us. We remember with compassion those for whom that relationship is not so positive and pray, Lord, for your healing where that can come. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And for those who have asked for our prayers because they are sick and ill or in need, including any whose names may still be on our prayer tree. Heavenly Father, look with mercy upon all those who are sick and suffering. Especially we ask your blessing on Janet, Helen, Janet, Evelyn and Ted, Roger and Mary, Doreen, Janice, Matthew, Tom, Betty, June, David and Pam and Nafat, and others we know of and love. Give wisdom and skill to all who care for them, that in your mercy they may be returned to health of body and peace of mind. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our okay. prayer. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones at a time when death seems to be all around us. This is a sad and difficult time for so many. From our own community, we especially pray for the families and friends of Daphne Cutting, Pat Goodger, Baby Eden, Baby Clement, William Cat, Baby Day, Baby Deverell, and Ruth Jones. Father God, we commit to your safe and eternal keeping the souls of those who have died, and especially those little ones we have named. We commend to your tender care and compassion those whose grief is greatest at this time because their love was strongest. And yet your love for all of us is deeper than anything we can feel. Grant them the comfort of your presence, the courage and faith they need to face life again in the days to come, and the assurance of your peace upon them and with them, O Lord, both now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our okay. prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. As I prepare the table, I pray for you and for our church in these difficult days when neighbour has become so vital. I am also minded that things are tough for so many people and I am even more grateful for your continued financial support of St Andrews. The church finances are going to be challenging this year. So, if in these difficult days you are able to give a little bit more, please do get in touch through the website or directly to me. Together I know we will get through this. Thank you. The offertory hymn this morning has been requested by Ruth. When I needed a neighbour, you were there.
Upon the poverty of our love and weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, which is both mine and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of his church. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and one for you, a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine will be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread 
and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, bringing before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of St. Christopher, Saint Andrew and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. join together in a prayer for our spiritual communion. Heavenly Father, as, as we, we participate with you, our people, in these holy mysteries, we pray you now 
to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Father. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. We do not presume, presume to, to come, come to this show. your table, merciful Lord. Lord trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are worth so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've come to stand here 
because as the sun shines through these windows, you get the most beautiful jewel-like effect. But the sun keeps disappearing behind clouds. Perhaps it will stay. I made an appeal on Sunday for hymns to include in the services, perhaps ones you haven't sung for a long time. It could be a new one to us. I think it's an ideal time to introduce some different hymns. So thank you to those who have made suggestions. We'll be using some of them over the next few weeks, but I'm always looking for more. I'm including the Ipswich blessing again at the end of the service. But first, I know this will put a smile on your face. Thank you, Natasha, for suggesting it. Our God is a great big God. 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 And he holds us in his hands. who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be, today and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. The service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious.
this face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.